Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Okay, listen, this is the most fantastic spread and I have Andropa to thank for this because we have a family group chat literally. But we're not thanking him yet. Yeah, okay, that's true because it just looks pretty. We don't know if it's going to taste good. He we say it's the best thing. The best. Yeah. He posted it onto the family group chat and was like, you guys need to film a video on this. It's called Sweet Octopus. I had to pay like $10 in delivery, a fat, fat tip. And here we are like two hours later. We've got crazy sushi donuts. This is a spicy tuna donut, a spicy crab tu donut, a tuna donut, a salmon donut, sushi donut. We've got shrimp pad thai, sushi burritos, uh, shrimp fried rice, a panang curry, some coconut shrimp, some fried shrimp tempuras. This is what they called Korean chicken, some takoyakis. It looks absolutely insane. Wow. And you know what's insane? The fact that it's almost Valentine's Day. That to me is never gonna stop being crazy. And I am about to break up with my fiance because he actually did not ask me for the ninth year in a row if I'm gonna be his Valentine, so. I don't know. What? Why are you assuming that I would be? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's almost Valentine's Day. And I know that some of you guys, you guys need the help, right? You guys, maybe you're like, I need some ideas. Or maybe some of you guys need to send this video to someone that needs some help, right? And Timu is your one stop. They've got the most competitively priced products in just all the categories that are important. Fashion, jewelry, home decor, pet supplies. I mean, everything that you could think of is on Timu. And I was so annoyed that I didn't know about Timu sooner. Apparently my fiance's dad loves Timu. Honestly, well, yeah. I was skeptical too. I was like, my dad likes it, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and then Stephanie started using it recently. She was addicted. <laughs> there was this one time I was on Timu, like really late at night. I shouldn't have even been awake at this point. And he's like, what are you She's doing? She's like, there's like 50 tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't stop. This is bad. This is so bad. And it's because I already have a bunch of Timu stuff. And Timu has top quality products at like an ultra affordable price. And they're so, so good at recommending. Oh my god, their <laughs> algorithm. I mean, there are things I didn't even know that I needed through Timu. And for Valentine's Day, Timu is running a massive sale site wide. You can head over to Timu.com for discounts up to 90% off. But the savings don't end there. Oh, let me show you this. Do you guys see this cute ribbon? That's from Timu. You guys know that. I'm obsessed with hair ribbons. This little flower basket right here. Oh yeah, Timu, you thought that this was a flower? It's a hair clip. It's a hair clip. You guys can get an additional 30% off the sale price. I saw this online on TikTok. Timu has these strawberry candles that are shaped like a strawberry. Maybe you guys can even get some pillows to build a, like a blanket for it. They've got the cutest pillows. I bought a bunch of socks from Timu last time and I had to get even more because they have like the cutest high quality socks. They're so soft on the feet. They even have like cute bins to organize my hair accessories into. And when you're done with all of that, you can even pick up a gift for your loved one, okay? They've got these really cool, unique pieces, really cool lamps and lights. Right now is the perfect time to start putting things together because Timu has free shipping for new users and free returns for up to 90 days. I haven't had a single return yet, but um, you know, it's great, okay? Timu accepts all major credit and debit cards, PayPal, Google Pay, Apple Pay, even pay later programs like Klarna and Afterpay. So make sure to click the link in the description box for an additional 30% off or use my my code each897. That's each897 for an additional 30% off. And thank you, Timu, for sponsoring today's video. And let's get into it. Oh, I am shit. so excited for this. Oh my god. I don't even know. Okay, I'm gonna go for this. I'm gonna go for a donut. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna go for a burrito. Okay, here's the burrito. It's a tuna. Mm. Zero to ten. How fresh is it? Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. Whoa, this is spicy, honey. Really? Oh my gosh, so spicy. For a poke spot in Atlanta, which is not next to the ocean, okay? <laughs> it's not a good start. It's really good. This is probably the best poke spot I had in Atlanta. But it's hard to say when, like, we lived in LA for a while. They've got some pretty good poke over there. They've got mm -hmm. some pretty fresh seafood over there for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, it's pretty mm. good. Mm. I'm gonna try the bad thai is so good. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Wow, yeah. the burrito is good. What Opa said was he doesn't even like tuna because it, it can be a little fishy. It's not fishy at all. It's actually delicious. Mmm. How is it? Oh man, that's good. Here, mm. you want? Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, god. never oh mind. My god. Oh my oh god. god. Oh my god. 
Mm -hmm. Amazing. And this spicy. is the spicy tuna. Really spicy. Mm -hmm. spicy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, it's very spicy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh my god, I'm into it. This Whoa. place is very generous with the spice. Ooh. Yeah, it's very rare to get a spicy tuna that's actually spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very, 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 very rare. This is spicy, you said? Mm hmm. At the end. No, <laughs> it's pretty spicy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mom. Mm -hmm. I want to try some of the curry. I might need you to yes, bring it transport down. it. Hold on, let me try a bite first. Everything is really, really good. Yeah, I'm kind of impressed. So if you guys are in Atlanta, I don't even know what part of Atlanta this was from. The delivery fee was kind of high, so. Oh my God, it's so spicy. <laughs> oh my mm. God, I'm excited. Okay, yeah, this might be- Zero to 10, how spicy is it? It's not nuclear, but it's got a lot of a lot of heat that I'm not expecting. I said make mm. it spicy. I didn't expect it to be that spicy. Incredible though. The pad thai mm. is delicious. Wow, I'm so impressed. Hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get this salmon donut. I do love a good salmon. And today we're talking about some odd, odd that's been happening in the news. These can't even really be full videos of their own. So I don't know what kind of series this could be, but I wanna to talk to you guys about things that have been going on in the news that I can't stop thinking about. And I don't know what's wrong with this world. <laughs> what does that mean? Like... People be doing some weird mm, Yeah. And I don't understand it. This first one is gonna, it makes me so paranoid. <clears throat> well, let me take one more bite. This is so yummy. Mm. You need to try mm. the burrito. It's better than the donut. Incredible, mm. right? What the heck? Mm. Oh wow, sushi burrito is banging. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Wow. So much crunch and mm. Mm. wow, this place is really, really good. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. you guys shall visit. It's good. Well, last bite, and I'm gonna get into it. Wow. You know that saying, no good deed goes unpunished? I never really understood it, but it's supposed to be a joke. Sometimes you do something good and you don't get thanked or even acknowledged. Mm. In fact, you might even be punished, punished. for uh, trying to be good. Got it. There are some peak, no good deed goes unpunished <coughs> energy. One Redditor had posted about how they offered to babysit one of their friend's kids. One f***ing time, okay? Happened one time. They were like, you know what? You guys haven't had a date night in forever. Let me watch your kid. I love kids. It's fine. Don't even worry. No, your kids are fine. Don't worry oh about it. God. They watch their kids once and now their whole group of friends keeps calling them up to watch their kids for free. And this guy is like, wow, no good deed goes unpunished. I just wanted them to have one date night and now I am the go-to de facto babysitter. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, yeah. that's the worst. The peak energy is also uh, someone drops $20 on the floor and you are hesitating. You're like, oh, I think that they just dropped $20. You go to pick it up and that person turns around <laughs> and you're trying to give it to them and they're like, are you trying to jack my fucking 20? That's my $20, okay? And a guy who works at this huge grocery store, huge, he works at the customer service desk. His manager walks up to him one day. He's like, hey, found this wallet in one of the carts, put it in lost and found. But why not do more than that? The employee thought, why not give it 110% every day that you show up at your job, huh? He finds the ID in the wallet, tries to locate a phone number in there, locates it, calls the customer to come pick up their wallet. Good deeds never go unpunished. The customer gets to the store, snatches her wallet from him and realizes that $400 of the cash is missing. She starts, rage throwing a fit, full on screaming, accusing this customer service guy of stealing her cash. The manager offers to show her video that he didn't pull any cash from there since there's CCTV behind the customer service desk. Okay. She refuses to even look at it, continues screaming. The only reason she stopped screaming is because the police were called, they showed the police the clip, and they threatened to arrest her if she didn't stop throwing baseless accusations. Yeah. That's why like, yeah. there was a, 
the trend of like you know when when in China like when you see old people on the ground. Oh, don't help them, yeah. It's just so sad because there's people who take advantage of it, or you know, it's just man. That's how we have trust issues.、Mm-hmm. Do you ever feel like you've experienced no good deed goes unpunished? You're like I never do good deeds. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I think I'm not like you. Yeah. You you kind of you always put yourself in these very difficult situations, and versus I'm just like, man,、eh, whatever. If they hate me, they hate me. If I if I do something, I I, I just make it clear. <clears throat> All the freaking time. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have to put myself in these situations for no good reason at all. Like, I'm like, be quiet. Just stop. <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> Stephanie loves to overpromise, and then it's like, oh my god. <laughs> But you're the one that offered. Yeah. <laughs> But she's like, that's just a nice thing to do. That's what people say. That's what people do. Because I guess I grew up where my mom told me never accept the offers. But still, it's、yeah. like the worst thing to do is. But you know what it reminds me of, and okay, I'm not offering like my kidney to people and then being like, oh, you got your hopes up, you think you're living, never mind, I want both my fucking kidneys, okay? And usually, you know how you meet up with someone, you run into them on the on the street. You're like, let's grab something. You're、here. like, yeah, let's catch up soon, and both of you guys are sharing that same energy. Let's go what? Let's、oh, grab a drink、up. soon. Like, let's go、oh. grab a bite later. Okay, okay. And you guys are sharing the same energy, and it's kind of implied that neither of you guys have any concrete plans to go catch up soon.、Mm-hmm. Don't say that. <sighs> I say stop that. saying that. I stop saying that. Yeah. Just say, just、yeah. seeing you. Yeah. Why would I can't? Because then they're standing there waiting for me to say more. No, I'm just、yeah. like, hopefully we're running into each other again. That's why I will never talk to a police officer without a lawyer present because I am um I fill the promise I fill the silence with promises. You stay silent and I'd probably be offering you my vital organs. <laughs> okay, I'm not offering like my kidney to people. Okay, you stay silent for too long. You got my firstborn child. I'm putting my car payment to you. I'm gonna give you my car title. What else can I give you? My life insurance. You wanna be the beneficiary of my life insurance? I don't know.、Why. No good deed goes unpunished. So this is the exemplary story of that. A woman named Katie Peters went to her local grocery store in Maryland. Okay, this is 2020 energy, just peak COVID pandemic. Everybody's already on edge. Everybody's a little bit angsty. There's so many lockdowns. This is the time when people were still dis. Disinfecting everything that they brought from the store. Do you remember that time when people were spraying disinfectant as a little Disney mist when you walked in through the front door? Those were the times. And Katie Peters, she's doing her able-bodied duty of putting her card away. I swear, I believe in this card theory. Do you guys believe in the card theory? What? What card theory? If you put your card away, you're a good person.、Mm. This only counts for able-bodied. People in non-emergency situations. God, people love to find little loopholes. Okay, I'm not saying when you're actively having going into cardiac arrest, you need to put your card away. What do you think is the most evil card people? The ones who put it on the, on the stumps. You know the stumps <laughs> with the little bit of patch of grass. The people that do that. The people that put it in empty spot. The people that be- put it between cars. Oh, between cars is the worst. Evil. Yeah. Pure evil. One gust of wind. Yeah. So anyway. She's doing her able-bodied duty, putting her card away. No good deed on God's punished. She returns the cart near the door of the grocery store. This is inside the grocery store. But as she's returning the cart, behind her is the entrance to the grocery store. So she's got her back to the entrance. It's a small entrance. It's not a massive one. A 51-year-old man walks up behind her, and like I said, the opening of the store is pretty small. So he facilitates this bump in where she's kind of walking out after putting her card away, and he's walking forward, and they bump into each other. It's the briefest bump, but he had something. In one of his jacket pockets, and he had taken it out. And in the blink of an eye, sk- he stabs Mystery Liquid from a syringe straight into her butt. What? Right when they make contact during that bump, he was ready. He was planning this. This was premeditated、like、syringe.、Needles? A needle. A needle. You can literally see her on the CCTV footage, feeling the pain of the injection. Because a regular bump, you'd be like, "Ow, ow!" Like, what the hell, right? But she goes, "Ah!" Like she basically bends over in this swift shock of impact type of back bending pain. You're saying he stabbed her with a needle in the butt. In the butt. In the butt. And did he inject something? Yeah. Like in a brief second, he did all that. Yes. And this makes me so scared. Holy. Sh- And we we don't know what he injected. Did she know that she has been injected? 
she immediately doesn't even accuse him. She starts looking behind her and at the ground. And I think her first thought was, did a bee sting me, you know? And if a bee stung her, it would drop dead to the ground. But that doesn't make sense. She's not out here provoking a beehive. So what could it have been? It, she said it almost felt like a cigarette being taken out on her butt, like a cigarette butt. Mm. Like, mm. And she's staring at this guy who instantly pretends to be a helpful civilian. And this, oh the God. surveillance it's catches like a him. Video. Yes, looking at the ground with her. And finally, she walks out of the grocery store, out of CCTV, and he walks out with her. And I guess she's becoming suspicious of him because it really felt like someone had put out a cigarette on her butt. That's what she's suspecting him of doing. She mm. doesn't know about a syringe. She doesn't see a syringe. Oh so she gosh. asks him outside of the store, did you put a cigarette butt out on my bum by accident? He stares at her. I mean, what would you respond to that as a normal person who did not indeed put out a cigarette butt on your butt? You just say, what? No, why would I do that? Like, I don't know what my yeah. response would be, but it wouldn't be this. He said, it felt like a bee sting, didn't it? Wow. And then he leaves. What does that even mean? So he did it. And he admitted to it. Katie's so confused. She didn't see the CCTV footage. Again, she has no idea of a sting. She just knows that her butt feels like it's on fire. She's a bit frazzled, her mind is all over the place, makes it to her car. She starts feeling a bit uncomfortable, you know, her butt is very, very sore. There's this burning sensation, and she tries to look, and there's this big puncture wound on her butt. It's got little white bumps around it, and she starts oh full-on panicking. This is no cigarette butt that's been taken out on her butt. This is no bee sting. She said, I started driving home, and it started really, really, really stinging bad. I called my son and I told him, something's not right. I hope nothing happens. I oh hope I make God. it home. I love you. Now, at this point, she had put two and two together and she believed that the man had bumped into her on purpose and had injected her with something. Mm -hmm. She said, I have no clue what was in that needle. Mm -hmm. It could have been rat poison. It could have been fentanyl, HIV. I mean, what is in that needle? Using CCTV footage, authorities would track this guy down and someone anonymously reported him as well. They track him down, pull him over in his car, and they find a syringe filled with mystery liquid in the driver's side door. Wait, a different one or the same one? A different one. Oh, he's gonna go out there again. Oh yeah. It had this mystery murky liquid inside. Yeah. Can you, can you guess what it is? Fentanyl, blood. Yeah, like drugs or... HIV. Yeah, is it milk? <laughs> milk. Close, close. Um, um, side note, this is a guy named, a uh, 51-year-old guy named Thomas Byron Steeman. And inside the syringe was his semen. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. His, so... Let me explain. The police test the mystery liquid. They also go to his house to search what? the whole place and they find syringes filled Whoa. with his semen during the search of syringe, just syringe oh after my syringe. God. A whole collection. It's like a freaking horror movie. Yes. It's believed that Katie Peters would not, was not even his first victim. Authorities said, if you've seen this video. Is this like psychological then? I think so. Like he gets off on it? Yeah, and the way that he tried to help her look afterwards, the way that he was like, it felt like a bee sting, didn't it? It's weird. It feels psychological. So I like injected my semen yeah. into you. Yeah. Wow, this mm. is some crazy And I guess we don't know if he has some sort of... Oh, disease. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. Because oh it is gosh. still a bodily fluid, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Oops. It's crazy. But the law enforcement officer says, if you watch this video, it's very aggressive. It's very deliberate. And it makes us think that it's not his first time doing this. What is it? Like this? No, just the way he bumps into her and just does it so smoothly oh. and without even like being nervous. The way that he planned the bump in. Mm-hmm. Everything is very deliberate. It's premeditated. It's not, it doesn't feel like this guy's first time doing it. It doesn't feel like he's mm. even nervous. They found that he seemed to be actively targeting women to inject with his semen. So he gets arrested and charged with first and second degree assault and reckless endangerment. Side note, Brian Steeman had a few previous run-ins with the law in 2013 for a domestic violence civil suit. So just all around, not a good guy. A scummy guy. A cummy guy, if you will. <laughs> but I will say, I am so tired of this world. Okay. <laughs> like
like now when we go grocery shopping, we have to make sure that we don't get abducted in the parking lot. Once we get inside, we've got to learn all the exits just in case. We got to wipe down the carts because I don't know, maybe we could be spreading the next epidemic. And then I got to look through shelves and shelves of processed food and try to find the ones that hopefully kill me a tiny bit slower than normal. And now you're telling me I have to make sure while I put the cart away like a good civilian, nobody stabs me in the butt with their bodily fluid. We are so tired, Brian. We are Wasn't so tired. Wasn't there a case that you were yeah. telling me about that they were doing something in the supermarket? What was it again? No, it's the um, the Reddit parasite guy. Oh, he would yeah. touch oh, his oh, butt yeah, 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 yeah. and like scoop out the oh, skin yeah. flakes because he has parasitic worms and they live. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh my God. He would touch his butthole and scoop out any uh, flakes ah! onto the buffet food. Ah! And then um, mm -hmm. people would get those parasitic worms ah! inside of them. Oh my God, I want to gag. Dude. I don't even want to know what goes on behind in a lot of grocery stores or restaurants behind closed doors. I can't even imagine. All I gotta say is we're freaking tired, okay? Thankfully, the guy was sentenced to 10 years in prison and Katie Peters was forced to be on preventative medications for 30 days. Mm -hmm. Because still, we don't know if there's some sort of disease, there's something that yeah. could be transmitted. Which reminds me, there was a, um, a case in the, the 80s. There was this girl, a 15 year old girl. She came into the hospital and she was showing symptoms of labor. Like she's straight up going into labor. And the hospital staff are like, mm, there's a baby that's about to come. And this is kind of weird because we checked down, we checked down you and you don't have a private area. You're like, what? Okay, let me explain. So she's got a small dimple, like a small shallow skin dimple it, instead of where her secret garden should be. It was a condition that she was born with. <laughs> and even she was confused because she's like, I literally can't get pregnant because there's no opening down there for me to get pregnant. There's no way for the swimmers to get to my uterus or my cervix. Like it, it just wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. But it didn't make sense because they do a little sonogram, an ultrasound, and she's pregnant. There's a little baby in there? Oh yeah, and the baby's coming out. The baby's what? ready. It's been nine months, the baby's coming out. So they do an emergency C-section, get the baby out. Side note, I mean, the fact that she's 15 should have been the most alarming part in all of this, but um, I guess that doesn't make headlines in the medical world. So this, this is their headlines. They're like, how did she get pregnant? The mm -hmm. doctors, they dig up her patient records. They find out that 300 days ago, prior to this visit, she was hospitalized for a knife wound in her stomach. Again. Why is a 15 year old getting stabbed and then impregnated, okay? Am I the only one asking the right questions right now? So the doctors, they look at her medical records. They're like, oh my God, it makes sense. Can you guess how it makes sense? Can you guess how the stab wound and the pregnancy one led to another? She got stabbed in the stomach mm -hmm. and then now she's pregnant, giving and birth. Are you telling me there's <laughs> swimmers on the knife? <laughs> no? Yes? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, okay. Okay, so he got a, okay, she got a stab wound. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, this is not something really, really gross, right? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. The doctor did something? The doctor who treated her did something? Is it like an easy answer or is it like, it's a very obvious answer? Yeah. This stab. is gonna bother him so. <laughs> who stabbed her? You need to know who stabbed her? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who? Yeah. Who? Is it important to the... Mm -hmm. Okay, then you can't withhold information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so less than a year ago, she was engaging in um, <clears throat> mouth activities with a new boyfriend. Okay. And it, it was, you know, timing that was very... Just unfortunate timing. So as her new boyfriend exploded in the throes of pleasure, her old boyfriend storms into the room, catches both of them in the act, pulls out his knife and starts stabbing at both of them. She gets stabbed twice in the stomach. Now, side note, she did not eat much prior to this whole thing. She did not eat much prior to engaging in these activities. So her stomach was relatively empty. Why is that important? It's oddly important because her stomach at the time did not have a ton of acid. You gotta be me right now so <laughs> when when she was stabbed it opened up her stomach where she had ingested the swimmers and usually the stomach acid kills the swimmers but not this time she didn't have enough stomach acid mm -hmm. and then when she was stabbed her stomach opened up and through the blood the swimmers traveled all the way to her egg wow these swimmers are really like yeah Determined. Determined. Bro. It's, they exited her stomach when she was stabbed, found her reproductive organs. Wow. 
That's a miracle. Yeah, it's kind of the craziest thing ever. People don't even. I mean, the doctors this still think it's. This is 100 real. Yes, the doctors were bamboozled. I mean, they、mm. were just so thrown off completely, utterly. It's just the craziest medical mystery, and it just really showed the tenacious spirit of the swimmers. Yes. They are arguably nature's strongest swimmers. Sometimes they can live in the body for up to three days. The swimmers? Yeah, the swimmers. They don't die. Uh, sometimes it takes them like two to three days. What are they doing? They just be swimming, looking for sniffing out a, sniffing、mm. out some prey. Oh yikes! Yeah, yikes! That's scary. Yeah, they're just in there. Yeah, even if thirty percent of them die, that's still like hundreds of millions of swimmers in there. <laughs> Probably the greatest accomplishment of men. <laughs> <laughs> It's the one, one universal accomplishment. Good for you. <laughs> that is the first crime that I wanted to talk to you guys. I was so blown off by this. I don't even want to go to the grocery store anymore.、Yeah. Who does that? And in recent times, you know what? This actually pissed me off. This is a case that really pissed me off. I feel like in recent times, police have gotten a very bad reputation. Rightfully so, a thousand percent. Don't get me wrong. Okay, I'm not even going to go down that road, but rightfully so. And firefighters were our safe place. You know, they were our comfort zone. Right? We were like, yeah, put them on magazines. Yeah, put them on calendars. We'll buy the calendars, but make sure they're shirtless. Oh yeah, for January, I want them wearing like a, oh December, I want one of them in a Santa hat, but shirtless, completely shirtless. Okay, and、uh, yeah, hose me down, firefighter, hose me down. Like that was the energy that the firefighters were getting, and they were there to do their jobs, risk their lives, put out fires, and because of how physically demanding their job typically was, they were.、Um, Inadvertently blessed with Marvel level athletic bodies most of the times. <clears throat> These guys were ripped. They are often sculpted like Greek gods. Okay, firefighters. People love them. Well, this story ruined firefighters for me. Not all of them. I get it. I respect anyone that's in the fire department that is、uh, doing their job and doing it well. But some of these people are despicable. So there's been a recent scandal in the UK fire department of Dorset and Wiltshire. I think it's in London. So these two stations, they have a WhatsApp group chat of all the firemen and women in those two stations in that group chat. And it's been alleged that the firefighters have been discussing jobs that they recently had, like being called out to car accidents where they、um, had to unfortunately pull a woman's dead body out of the car. She was already deceased at that point. And that's like an overall just a very depressing, sad story. But later, the firefighters at the scene they went into this group chat and they start talking about what underwear she was wearing. Allegedly, some of them would even take pictures at the crime scenes. Their bodies would be in it, and they would post it into the group chat. A female firefighter who saw these conversations was so disgusted she blew the whistle on the whole group chat, and she said there are explicit pictures. There are some photos of accidents. Sometimes you can even see a dead body in the accident, and you know retrieving the body of someone dead should tear you apart,、mm -hmm. not make you want to take photos of it just to joke about it later, because that's someone's loved one, isn't it? That's someone's relative. Allegedly, the same firefighters would be called to、uh, people's houses to do like wellness checks, like fire checks, fire safety visits, where they would go into these people's homes, and of course, the community trusts them wholeheartedly. Oftentimes, they'd be at work when the firefighters would come and check their homes. Because、mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't trust anyone to come into the house. I wouldn't trust Amazon to drop off packages. I wouldn't trust a maintenance guy to come in. But a firefighter, I think that's the one person I'd be like, okay, yeah, let them in, right? Well, allegedly, some of these nasty firemen—not all, but some of them—the nasty, disgusting, vile ones—they would go into these people's homes, ruffle through the、um, cabinets and drawers and the closets, find women's underwear and/or sex toys, and take pictures of them, and then they would post it onto the WhatsApp group chats. Another female firefighter、mm -hmm. said, "It disgusts me that I have to work alongside these people."、Um, It's people, crazy that yeah. They do it in front of these female workers、yes. too. Like they don't, they don't even care. They don't even try, try to hide it. It's because、um, the female firefighter said there's no repercussions for them. They've already all tried making complaints. So they're that ballsy then. Uh huh. Wow. I think the lives of、um, police chiefs, fire chiefs, must be、um, scandalous. Why? 
I don't know. I guess I don't have enough knowledge, and maybe I'm just making it more sinister because I'm very unaware of what their lives are, what their day-to-day -day tasks are. But mm -hmm. I just feel like they have a lot of power. They have a lot of power. They're politically well connected, typically. Sometimes the vibes are off. Okay, mm. that's all I'll say. Sometimes, if I'm not mistaken, right? I feel like there's a lot of focus on politicians, like the big ones, like the president. But I think we should really be terrified of the local politicians, the local police chief, like the local uh, head of the school district. Like these are people that I feel like oddly impact everyone in the community's lives, no? It's like just weird. And nobody really even knows their names. Nobody really knows what they're about most of the time. It's just all very shady. We gotta, we gotta do, um, we gotta stop doing like influencer drama channels and do local politician drama channels. <laughs> I feel like their lives are gonna be juicier. Maybe I should start that, okay? <laughs> Might die. not might not be bad for them. Right? No. I mean, it's. I think that would be a great idea because sometimes it's very hard to compile information on these people mm. because it's just very difficult and they're very evasive. But then there's bias and there's like different yeah. different in, interest party and uh, there we go. There we back go. in politics. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> We're back out again. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, um, the female firefighter said. These, some of these people, these firemen, are not on the job for the right reason. I think they're just power hungry and they get off on it. Once a firefighter came forward with allegations, more fire, female firefighters came out to say that the firemen in London were as boys club as it gets. A female firefighter said that she was sexually harassed by one of her coworkers at the scene of a freaking fire. Yeah, she alleged that they're putting out this house fire, right? And it's dampening down, the fire's coming down, the fire truck had run out of water. They gotta go. The crew's gotta go back, fill up the engine with more water, and then come back. So she and one of the male colleagues decided that they were gonna stay in front of this house until the fire truck comes back. Mm -hmm. And the guy just tried trying to make out with her. He told her straight up, if we hurry, you can insert sexual flavor to me before they come back. And she said, I remember just sitting there thinking in my mind, like, please guys, just come back. Hurry, like, what's taking them so long? I felt really uncomfortable. I kept moving around. I was like a cat on a hot roof. I kept moving around, trying to stay away from him. It was horrendous. She said it felt like if she wanted to move up in the ranks of the fire department, she would have to do sexual things with some of the firemen. Even before her training, a fireman, the trainer, tried to force her into having sex with him, and he straight up told her, get naked. If we hurry, we can have sex before they come back. And she said she tried to leave, and he scolded her. As your officer, you have to do as you're told. She pushes past him and says, I'm not doing that. She said it was the worst feeling in the entire world that no matter what she does, that's all she'll ever be is a sexual object to these people. Another female firefighter shared dozens of sexually explicit messages she received from firemen in her department. Literally, her coworkers. Like, coworkers were sending dick pics. Unsolicited dick pics. And she'd said, I'd never want to see a picture like that. And it just repulsed me. And then you have to go back to work. You have to sit with this person in the truck. You will have to go to the fire. Call, you have to do calls with them. And you know, the way you feel and the way that you know that they've sent you these things, it just changes the whole atmosphere. It affects everything. It affects our relationships. It affects our trust. Because you meet someone new and you think, can I trust this person? Is he going to say something? Is he going to do something? It makes you feel like you can't trust any firefighter anymore. Another woman came to her to say that she was a probationary recruit, meaning she was on probation at her job just because she's starting off. Like there was nothing wrong with her. She did nothing wrong. Just probationary. And a male firefighter cornered her, put his hands around her throat and said, I can make you do whatever I want. Later in her career, she found semen on her bedding as a joke. Another joke was that male firemen, um, uh, put a dead animal in her locker. Another joke was that she was locked in an elevator. Oh, another joke was that someone urinated inside of her helmet. Another time, God. allegedly, a male firefighter colleague of hers asked to borrow her phone. Probably under some fake excuse, like, I left mine, can you please let me borrow your phone? I gotta do something. She let him, and he found naked pictures of her in her camera roll, uploaded them to her social media. Thankfully, it was taken down almost immediately, but it was too late. Her friends, family, and colleagues saw it. And she said, there are a handful of male firefighters who I genuinely believe hate women and don't want women in the service. They do not believe a woman can do the job and they try to force us out. If you complain to management, the people responsible are spoken to quietly. The abuse gets worse because you're seen as a snitch. So most people will just keep quiet and it all gets swept under the rug. 
If there are no repercussions for bad behavior, the culture is not going to change. Many of my male colleagues have been great to work with, very supportive, okay? But there are a few who are just toxic. I have been left feeling paranoid, in tears, and at points in my career, I wanted to leave, but I refused to quit because I love my job. I'm not gonna be forced out. The former fire chief said uh, he wasn't surprised because there's something called FIFO culture in the fire service in London. Can you guess what FIFO stands for? FIFO? F-I-F-O. Fit in or fuck off. You're told either fit in as a woman, pretend to be one of the boys, or fuck off. Like, we're not gonna change for you. Like, we're not gonna stop being misogynistic for you. What? Yeah. Allegedly, these firemen were, that were accused of all of this are still with the department. And the fire chief came forward to say, because it became such big news, they said, the matters that you guys have raised with us are deeply concerning, and we take allegations of this nature extremely seriously. As allegations of criminal behavior are involved, we have immediately alerted the police. So the appropriate action is going to be taken. I am also commissioning an independent investigation, Ugh. and as part of that investigation, we will be providing all of our female staff with the opportunity to speak to a third-party independent organization. But kind of not good enough. There's also a, a lot of journalists started digging into this once these made news, because it's just weird. There's this forum, like a Facebook page, called Hoses and Helmets. It's a private group that you have to be invited and accepted into, and it's only for firefighters, hoses and helmets. Mm -hmm. And some of the senior firefighters in these two departments, Dorset and Wiltshire, they are in this group. Like, mm -hmm. I'm talking fire chiefs, senior management. And the Hoses and Helmet group would post misogynistic memes. Dang. So, one was a picture of two drooling seals that looked ready for the next meal. Like, very predatory and hungry looking seals, the animal. And they look kind of pervy, as much as a seal can look pervy. And the caption was, What the new female recruit sees on her first day when everyone tries to either be her dad or flirt with her. So you already know that you're making female recruits feel uncomfortable. Another one was a woman, a cartoon of a woman in um, pain with fear in her eyes. And the caption read, the face you make after failing to extend the nine meter ladder on your own after posting an inspirational International Women's Day quote on Instagram. Wow, this is just crazy. And that oh quote, that God. caption is so specific and so convoluted and so not funny and so sexist. It's like, who really came up with it? Like who? Who are you mad at? Because you're clearly, something happened to you. Yeah, like, bro, it's not that serious. It's, yeah. it, it's nothing to brag about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what? It doesn't prove anything. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't understand, Kevin. And another one was a cartoon pig putting on his pants, and a female pig is crying in the bed next to him. And the caption reads, when she slept with you because you're a firefighter, but then you tell her you're actually just on the drone team. Another one was a cartoon picture of a woman's under, um, underwear, and it was wet. And it read, when she finds out that you've done over 15 years on the job and you know your way around a Volvo fire engine. Really? Yeah. Really? Which, like, <laughs> I mean, I get it. Firefighters are, like, have a reputation for being hot and, like, lifesavers. But if you were at a bar with me and I was single and you're telling me that you know your way around a Volvo fire engine, that'd be the last thing that's happening to me. I'd be like... What? Yeah. I mean, you don't know a Volvo 500... Fire engine? Fire engine? Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Another one was a cartoon woman bending over and the caption read, When she finds out that you're search and rescue trained, but you're waiting for your pager to go off because you're a hero 24-7, 365 days. <sighs> Cringe. Yeah. <laughs> These are... It's so cringe. I don't even know what to say. The former fire chief said that something needs to be done. And he thinks that it's a minority of misogynistic firemen. And the majority of these good firemen who are... They need to help these women that are being harassed and they mm -hmm. need to take these women's claims seriously and that's how you clean up the fire department because it's just a minority of men committing these atrocious acts but it's the fact that most of the firemen are not standing behind the women. I don't even know what to say about that one, honestly. That just made me really depressed. I saw people talking about it on TikTok and I was like, okay, we can't even have firefighters anymore, so I can't put my cart away at a grocery store. We can't even look at firemen's calendars. I better not have a house fire. I should knock on wood. Before we end it, I wanna tell you about a weird internet conspiracy. 
This one is funny. Maybe we should end it on a good note. So there was a woman named Lucy Watson from the UK. This one blew my marbles. I thought it was fake news for a second. And it might very well be because there's conspiracies about it. There was a woman named Lucy Watson from the United Kingdom. And she's scrolling through Facebook. And she's scroll, scroll, scrolling. And she comes across a promotional video for a local Indian restaurant called The Spice Cottage. And it's captioned, New Year, New Mood. <laughs> so for the last few weeks, we've been working hard to make our dining experience even more memorable. Memorable. Join us for the perfect blend of exquisite flavors with classical and unique dishes inspired by ancient family recipes. It's giving ad, right? Which is fine. And there's this one clip in the video where the camera pans over the restaurant and shows a bunch of people enjoying, a bunch of customers enjoying their delicious Indian food. Lucy stops the video. Who the f fuck is that? Oh my god, that's my husband on our glasses. That's my husband in the video. Right there. He's eating his fa favorite chicken korma and that's his son from another marriage that he's sitting in front of. Huh. <sighs> She's so shocked. She said, the moment I saw it, I knew it was Harry, my husband. He has the same build, same glasses, and the way he sits is the same. I mean, I wasn't upset by this. I just didn't understand it. I guess it's pretty shocking seeing anyone in a promotional video. Uh -huh. Is that why she's so shocked? Uh -huh. Or is there another reason? He's Can dead. you guess? He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> her husband has been dead for nine years. Her husband is dead. Her husband has been dead for nearly a decade. And she's seeing him in a chicken korma eating ad. Lucy's thinking to herself, this is bizarre. Okay, it's bizarre. I swear to God, it's Harry. My God. I mean, this guy only ate chicken korma when he was alive. And that was his favorite dish at all these Indian restaurants. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that that's my husband. Because not only is that my husband for sure, that's his son for sure. How do you have two doppelgangers? She watched the video 30 times. But how? He's been dead for nine years. She immediately comments, uh, how old is this footage? My late husband and his son are on the first shot and he died in 2014? Question mark. She thought the the, foot, the the restaurant would say, oh yeah, maybe a couple years ago, maybe a decade ago. We just used some new footage, some old footage, it's a mashup. But instead they responded, sorry to hear that, Lucy. The footage was recorded last week. <laughs> Literally what? So the internet, they do the only thing that they know what to do in this situation. Conspiracy time. It's conspiracy time. Okay, this one is easy. It's low-hanging fruit. Conspiracy. The guy faked his death for insurance money to start a whole new life. Look, he's eating chicken korma with his son. He just wanted to get rid of his wife. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Someone commented, we need an update. Was his body ever found or just a canoe? Okay, you're like, what? Why are they insinuating that it's a canoe? There is, um, there's a guy named John Darwin. It's a long story. I'm going to cover it in Wait, the pod. <laughs> So we got we have cameras in our New York City apartment. We're in Atlanta right now. There's, There's people in our apartment in New York, so <laughs> Hello? This is bizarre. Oh, okay, okay. Cause I'm we're not home right now and I just saw like people in and out. <laughs> that was so scary. He stopped this and he goes, Oh, why are there people in our New York apartment? But there was a pause and I was like, I swear to God, Mother Forker, if you say, Why are there people upstairs right now? <laughs> I would have myself. I would have myself so hard because oh, <laughs> we're home alone uh, in the basement. <laughs> so anyway, um, the John Darwin guy, he faked his death, left his wife widowed in a canoe accident. Or at least that's what he wanted people to believe. It's a long story. I'm covering it on the pod because his wife wrote a whole book on the bizarre inner details of that fake death that he had. So stay tuned for that. So what happened? Oh, okay, we're getting there. Another poster wrote, he wasn't dead, he was just in a korma. Because <laughs> he was eating chicken korma. <laughs> Sorry. Curry is so good, this lady's late husband came back to life for it. That one's not that good. <laughs> There's another one that says, all you non-believers think this lady is lying. <laughs> These are, it's okay. <laughs> another one said, maybe he was... In the loo all this, all this time. In what? the loo, in the loo all this time. So to make matters creepier, the footage was allegedly filmed on Friday the 13th. So this faking death theory... Was... I look over there and this guy is... <laughs> this faking death theory was a popular one. Others said no. The conspiracy is clearly this is the restaurant trying to drum up some free PR. And maybe the lady's working with them, right? Who knows? For a few reasons. One, her husband is 
Harry Doherty, an award-winning journalist. He was known to have a larger-than-life personality. He was very well-known, very well-connected. There's no way that a public figure like that could fake their own death and then do doesn't have plastic surgery, doesn't have a disguise, and nobody would think twice again if they ever ran into him. That doesn't make sense. Lucy herself said, the internet going crazy was wild, and the restaurant's respond kind of, response kind of annoyed her because they told her it was filmed last week, but it couldn't have been. She commented asking it because she knew that it was old footage. She said she knew this was because the Spice Cottage used to be busy, like the video showed nine years ago. But not anymore. The Spice Cottage never has a whole restaurant full of people, she said. Yeah. What? They're now using this to fill their empty seats and it's working, this whole conspiracy. She said, let me tell you, Spice Cottage's whole PR was going down. There's a newish Indian restaurant that's trying to get a Michelin star that's popping. There's an old-fashioned Indian restaurant that's really good, okay, very um, uh, authentic, really good. There's another nice cheap one for fast eats. And then there's another one that's very trendy and popping with the young kids. So the Spice Cottage is old news. People don't really go there anymore. She thinks that they picked pieces from various videos and made a montage. Uh -huh. So it made it look like the restaurant was super full. And that's the only explanation that Lucy can think of. But she's just kind of confused at how they could say that this footage was from a week ago because there's no way. Mm -hmm. Harry died in 2014 and there's no doubt about it. He was seriously ill in the hospital for the last few months. Uh, they were going to do a liver transplant, but he didn't make it. He was as skinny as anything before he died. So that video must have been taken months before he passed. But the owner of the Spice Cottage still wholeheartedly insists that the footage is just from a few weeks ago. He claims okay. the restaurant would have looked very different in 2014. You would be able to tell in the video, but no, you, don't, you can't tell. He said, we have new tables and they're the new ones in the video. All the videos used were recorded last week, January 9th, 2013. So all of our old tables used to be covered in red and white cloths and it's evident that that's not in the footage. So, I yeah. mean, this is a very highly unusual situation and we hope that clarifies any confusion, but we didn't lie. Which Lucy responded that she believes it's an edited montage, like a mashup of a ton of videos. And she said that at one point, a woman wearing a check dress just halfway disappears. Some people at certain tables change. She said, I mean, they must have done like an old hash of old footage. It's not the same thing all the way through. Any idiot can see that. Side note, even Harry's son, the one allegedly in the video with the late Harry, he said, no way, it's not my dad. And it's not me. She's got it wrong. Lucy hit back and said, I'm not claiming your dad is still alive. I was there when he died in 2014. And I'm, but I'm 99.5% sure it's him and you. There's no way that you'd get two doppelgangers like that. Would the son say that's not him? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's why people are like, ooh, is it a conspiracy that the husband did fake his death and maybe only the son knows and now the son is like trying to be like, no, that's not dad, that's not even me. <sighs> so this back and forth with Harry's son sent the internet into another layer of crazy. What if he's covering for his dad who is indeed still alive? In the end, Lucy tried to end this bizarre internet saga by saying Harry would have been in fits of laughter if he saw these comments. So what do we think? Does Harry have a doppelganger? Is the restaurant lying? Or do you think the c crazy conspiracy that he faked his death is true? They can't track down who it was? No. Is it like some grainy footage? It doesn't look that grainy. Do you think it's just someone who looks like the husband? But how do you explain the son? Yeah, just son and the husband. Kind of look alike. Is like, that what you what think? What did she do? Like, so what did she do after? Did she like, did she believe that the husband is alive? No, no, no. She knows he's dead. She claims she watched him die. And I believe her. But so she believes the restaurant's using old footage. Yeah, and trying to pass it off as new footage and using this opportunity to get free PR. Because they got a lot of free PR. Or like international PR. Like tell me why a random girl sitting in her basement in Atlanta knows about Spice Cottage in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> a random small Indian restaurant, okay? <laughs> I think it was either old footage or people who look very similar. I just don't think that he could have faked his death. I think that sounds crazy. Yeah, and I, I think it's... Someone who looked like, because footage from 10 years ago would look very different. Yeah. Like old footage are very old. Yeah. Very fascinating. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You, you just, boom, start a new identity and start a new life. That's very cool. Oh, that's got my brain thinking. How do I do it? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more mini cases like this, because these are just bizarre. 
People are weird. Please stay safe out there and make sure to check out Timu linked in the description and use my code for 30% off because look at these cute little strawberry candles. I can't wait to burn them. They're so cute. I don't even want to burn them. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.